what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to talk about final destination 6 in this video here today so craig perry put out this post looks like on facebook yesterday uh, confirming that Final Destination 6 Bloodlines did start filming on Monday. He said after a long, hard slog through the pandemic and the strikes, day one is finally in the can. 2025, confirming the release year, so it's coming next year. 2025 will mark the 25th anniversary of the release of the first installment in the franchise. To honor the occasion with another worldwide theatrical release in IMAX, no less, is a rare and wonderful thing. I'm wholly grateful for the opportunity and humbly appreciate the splendidly talented team that has worked so hard to bring this to life. See you next year. P.S. I know, I know, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, but this is the title we've had for three years and we're keeping it for now. I will argue that the Bloodlines title might have meaning to it, and I've discussed it numerous times on this channel. I'm going to discuss it again in this video here as well. But Final Destination 6 started filming. It's coming out next year. What month do you think is going to drop? When would you like to see it drop? Let me know all that down below. Now, we're going to talk about these rumored cast members who may be a part of Final Destination Bloodline. So shout out to you, Jen, and this tweet you put out today. And I've also reached out to have this confirmed, but I'm just going to say this is a rumor for now, just like Rebecca Staub. But according to sources, as Jen tweets, Quintessa Swindle, Breck Bassinger, Anna Lore or Loray, and Richard Harmon have all been cast in Final Destination 6 Bloodlines. Quintessa will play Stephanie, our lead actress, having the premonition. Now, Stephanie, of course, is the character we've been talking about on this channel. Again, I'm working to have it confirmed, but we'll see how this all plays out with the cast. The biggest bit of evidence that proves that it's true is because if you look at these actors' Instagram pages, one or more of them are following each other. And then they're not only following each other, they're also following Adam Stein or Zach Lepofsky, who we know is the co-directors of Final Destination Bloodline. So it's all very interesting. And the evidence so far is pointing in favor of these people actually being involved with the project. And I hope that it's true because this looks like a very talented group of people. Now, I don't know which one of them may or may not have worked with Devin Sawa, but my prediction is that there's someone involved from the Chucky show that may have been cast that's yet to be announced. But again, all of this is just a rumor for now. I'm working to have it confirmed, but we'll see where this leads us. We're gonna be discussing this interview Craig Perry had with uh, Cinebinge and going over the scrapped first responders plot, why it was scrapped and or what ultimately led to it being scrapped from him, apparently. And then also shifting gears and talking about what's coming up with the Bloodlines plot and what I think is going to happen just based off of his comments in this interview. And I'll leave a link to the interview in the description. So Cinebinge did an interview with producer Greg Craig Perry a few months ago at this point and he confirmed my scoop related to the previous story from patrick patrick melton and marcus dunston where we have been following an emt named vanessa who revived a man who sexually assaulted a woman and then went on to cause the opening sequence this idea as i mentioned was pinned by patrick melton and marcus dunston but as we know the first responder story has been completely scrapped altogether Craig gave praise to Patrick and Marcus during this interview before mentioning the script just never got off the ground because the third act was something they were struggling to figure out. Something regarding set pieces and just never really been able to figure out, I guess, how to make the third act work. And it also was just something the studios weren't really too confident in because a lot of you seem to think that this could have ended up being better than what we're going to get with Bloodlines. And I can't really discredit that because that is very interesting that it related to a woman who saved someone who was assaulting a person and then because she saved them doing what she was supposed to do as a EMT just being responsible and acting in her official capacity that said person would then go on to cause the opening sequence but it would not have happened had you just let him die especially considering he was assaulting a woman very interesting but he said that John Watts eventually called said he had a good idea which we know is what we're getting for Final Destination 6 Bloodlines and Craig caught this very different from the previous five, but didn't go into anything too deep. Granted, we still know more than they want to share with us. Uh, called it very unique way to approach it. He says they were fully cast and ready to go before the actor strike, which brings me back to another point I made in another video. So if Final Destination 6 Bloodlines was ready to go and fully cast last summer, this makes me want to draw attention back to the rumor related to Rebecca Stobe or Staub who was reportedly rumored to be cast, but no reputable outlets ever confirmed it. It did, however, come from someone who has been spot on in the past. I think their account on Instagram is Aren't You Entertained. Check them out. 
I'm thinking that Rebecca was recast and whoever else might have been signed on was also recast because Craig is saying that they had the cast ready to go and the actor strike just kind of messed it up. So my assumption now still will be after the strike ended, people who were committed couldn't commit any further. And that's what led to them not being able to start a production right away once the strike was over because the strike ending when it did, didn't allow for these people to commit to the project anymore so they had to recast and that's probably why rebecca won't be in the film but as i'm listening to the interview i'm like okay the biggest takeaway here so far is that the first responder story is 100 percent not involved with the current plans which again revolve around a woman named esther who stopped the tower collapse decades ago or saved a bunch of people who went on to have families that never should have been a thing and now death has finally worked its way back to esther and her family the story will mostly be carried by esther's grandchild named stephanie who i think is supposed to be going away to college she has this premonition about dying in the tower collapse and you know all of that good jazz traditional foundation nation stuff but then craig purposely asked cinebinge what they want to see in Final Destination 6 or what is one of their hopes for the film and they say they love to see basically like an expanded version of what was done in FD5 so I guess instead of just having Final Destination and Final Destination 5 be connected their mindset is what if the whole series can somehow be connected with one major or connected in one major way the way the flight 180 connects one in five I found that interesting as a response since the current theory for me and others is that bloodlines and these people Esther saved from that tower collapse are all going to be connected to said collapse and connected to people that we've met from the last five movies. Thus, the tower collapse is going to connect everything. It's going to surpass what FD1 does to FD5. The tower collapse is going to loop all of these movies together and not just have them set in the same world as they already are but they're connected by this one major event and this is just me bringing this up as a side argument but a scene in fd2 also has like characters recounting how they are connected to the 180 flight craig also reminds and start teasing them how if they watch the films they'll notice these subtle connections like olivia from fd5 having a picture of her of herself at the devil roller coaster from fd3 so it's interesting that craig is entertaining their response by reminding them of the connective tissue that's been here especially when we know that the subtitle for six is bloodlines and what better way for the bloodline subtitle to have meaning and make sense if death has been targeting bloodlines this entire for the entire duration of the franchise that never should have existed because all of these people we've been meeting are connected to this tower collapse story that's about to unfold in final destination six yes it can be convoluted depending on how it's executed yes it can be dangerously destructive to the narrative if it's done with a lot of uh question marks surrounding it because they are this does sound quite ambitious if it goes that route he didn't say this is what is going to happen but it just his energy and the responses that again i'm going to leave a link to in the description for you to check the interview out it seems like what final destination 6 bloodlines will end up doing is having all of these movies connected because of this tower collapse we're going to find out that everyone from fd1 had some sort of relatives involved with the tower collapse or maybe not everyone but a few people on the flight 180 vacation or the school trip had relatives who were part of the tower collapse that made it out and because of that death targeted them on this flight thus ruining the lives of other people who didn't have anything to do with the tower collapse and then people who were involved with the highway to hell incident in fd2 they are also connected to people from the tower collapse and because of their connections that impacts not only them but those other people around them who had nothing to do with the tower collapse same thing fd3 those people in fd3 whoever they are that were on that roller coaster ride they have relatives who were part of that tower collapse in the 60s and because they're here this is death trying to get back at them and everyone else that's just happened to being on the ride for the sake of it this is all going to be very interesting if it ends up being true i did like how they basically revealed that what ultimately killed the first responders plot is just disagreements about what to do with the third act and just lack of confidence in the screenplay not that the screenplay that i read was the worst thing ever uh, but i do recall my own feedback being it seemed a bit messy but it just needed some tweaking i i do think that after i watch bloodlines even if i like bloodlines i'm still going to prefer the potential that i saw in this first responder story i think it's very unique and i think it could have been very timely 
uh, and commentated on a lot of stuff, especially with the tension people have with the police today in America and around the world. Could have been great if they had just tweaked the story a little bit. But that was a nice scoop confirmed from Craig Perry that I discovered on that interview from Cinebinge. Again, I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's nice to know that he is teasing what, again, people are theorizing already is that the tower collapse itself is going is to somehow link in all of these movies. Do you guys think that would be the best route to go? Do you not think it would be the best route to go? Do you think it'll be too convoluted? Let me know all of that down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notification. I can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.